Right. I'm on a job today where I'm doing some remedial work after an ICR and kind of like a partial rewire of some of the circuits. So the lights haven't got earths in. So I'm upgrading this and I'm incorporating all the boards into one board. I've gone for a fuse box actually this time. The reason being is that I went to Hager because my wholesaler the miniature RCBOs for Hager were cheaper than the fuse box RCBOs. So I went with Hager and they rang me up last week and said, oh, actually we can do the uh, fuse box ones at the same price now. I said, oh, okay, right, well, I'll have a fuse box then, you know, with a standoff bracket and everything. So that's coming today. So I'm not gonna change the board today. I'm gonna start rewiring the lights upstairs. I've just put some sheeting down. So I'm gonna be up and down with a bit of a, a load of gear. So I think I'm going to be here somewhere. I might go into the floor of the bathroom. So this bathroom's going to get completely gutted today by a mate of mine. So hopefully I might get up the floor here, come along. And so none of the lights upstairs have got an earth in. So that's why I'm doing like a partial rewind. I'm going to do, I'm going to do the bathroom first. And then in the months to come, I'll slowly work around and do all the bedrooms and do all the upstairs. And today, as I haven't sheeted this because I think I'm going to be getting up this carpet, we're going to do a chase, light switch, chase, fan isolator, chase into the loft. And then we're going to have four JCC cans because the client wants a uh, hue lamps that she can use via a uh, the sensor. New centrifugal fan in the loft and a shaver socket in the cupboard. A shaver socket in the cupboard that radiator is going <clears throat> so i'm just going to do that today do the first fix well and second fix actually do the whole lot today of the bathroom and then tomorrow i'm going to change the board there's loads of remedial work to do on some of the circuits as to disconnect remove and replace some um, metallic class one lights i've got to repair the well, i've got to rewire the cooker circuit so one thing that I disagree on, and it, not everyone is of the same opinion, is using those R1 or R2 leads. I don't agree with testing to the MET. I'd rather disconnect the CPC, clamp onto it, and test to the appropriate line conductor. However, some people would go onto the line and then test the MET. Now that gives you parallel paths, and that's exactly, if you were one of those chumps who did that, you would have got a reading on the cooker, which is here, which in reality, so I dropped the front off and it was new cables. And there's a CPC in the, in, in the incoming and the outgoing. However, there was no R1 or 2 because someone had done a bodge underneath the plinth here. And there was actually a two core six mil going to the juncture box and then new set of cables from that up. But you would have got reading if you just did line to the MET because that two core cable in that brown junction box, I'll, I'll get it out later. In that brown junction box was a, a strapped on bit of braided wire went to, which went wrapped around the lead incoming pipe. So which is why I wholeheartedly disagree with people testing when they do R1 or 2 to the MET. I believe in disconnecting the conductor from the terminal to inspect it and clamp on it and test it properly. So if you're one of those chumps, you would have just got a read in and wrote it down. Whereas because I did it probably, I highlighted an issue that had been like that for a long time using a parallel le the lead earth, the lead pipe as its main um, earth fault path. So that's tomorrow's job anyway. I'm gonna rewire the cooker, change the board, incorporate all the circuits into one nice fuse box board. I don't know where I'm gonna put it just yet. And then there's disconnects and remove some lights and then there's some work to do in the garage there's some sockets and lights that need uh, replacing the initial plan was just to uh was just to do the remedial work but then the client decided that perhaps it would be pertinent after my advice to rewire just a section of it because none of the lights upstairs or downstairs have an earth to get the first leg in and then over time we'll slowly rewire the house so so for the ground floor i am going to run a wire in whilst i'm running these cables in for the lights upstairs i'm going to run a two and a half mil for the sockets upstairs but leave it cord underneath the 
landing and then a, a light cable down and into the ground floor. So in the kitchen downstairs, I'll show you. Like I said, I'm slowly going to rewire the place. I, all these downloads have got Earth's, you know, CPCs in the cables, but there's actually no Earth present in the circuit. So they've just tagged onto, you know, an already uh, a circuit without a CPC. So they've got all Earth's in and they're all connected. But obviously I took a wild guess that probably somewhere in the middle of the kitchen where the original center light was, I bet there's a junction box has just been pushed up into the loft. And if I can get to that, I can give it a mains and a CPC. So, which I did find. So I've wired two upstairs lights, downstairs lights, just for the first feed. There's the upstairs lights. It's gonna go to the bathroom switch. I found the junction box underneath, underneath here. So I left my little loop, you can see it just there. You can tell that someone's put a single core CBC from something. I think it goes onto a pipe. But there's my in and out for the ground floor. <coughs> and the outgoing way. So I've, I fed it and then did another cable back out. And it's just coiled up at the moment, just here. It will go under the floor and do the hallway lights. Just the first feed in again. Just want to get out of the bathroom because the client is getting this bathroom done and dusted in the next week. So there's no point me feeding that light and then doing nothing with it because I need to get back underneath the floor to send the loop out around to the rest of the ground floor. So I've got the cable. So yeah, I've got the cable for the shaver socket over there. I've got the feed in here and I've done the shaver socket, not part of the loop because I'd rather have it so we can disconnect it if she wants it. It was like a maybe. So <clears throat> rather than leaving a live loop of cable over there. So I've got a feed in and then I've got a feed out which goes back behind that excuse that <laughs> and then up into loft and I'm going to terminate into a Wager box I've got the switch line going straight up behind that box and out and over I'm going to just about to mark out the spots and do the spots and then I've got a three core which goes into the fan isolator and then out and then up and then I'm going to replace that fan over there with a centrifugal in my area where I live there's a load of hollow bricks that this was solid and then the hollow bricks start up here and the hollow bricks are terrible to work with. Terrible. Sometimes you can get a little screw and a plug in on the side or above, but I got nothing here. So I've had to use foam. It looks horrendous, but I promise you that will be rock hard once it's set. I'll take a couple of screws out and it's just a little bit of filling. Um, that looks horrible, but it's the only way <laughs> um, with, the, with the hollow bricks. I don't know if you have them in your area, but they're just a pain to work with. I don't come across them that often, because unfortunately I don't actually get to work local near near where I live, which is weird. There's a lot of other sparkies nearby who seem to have dibs on a lot of local jobs, so I don't tend to work local, but locally, even I've got it in my house, hollow bricks. So uh, yeah, I'll let that set. I'm just gonna mark out the spots now. And I'm having four JCCs, but can, so they can have Philips Hue lights because they want um, the Philips Hue sensor on the lights, which is why I've got to wire the switch line out to lights in one cable and the fan to another because they want to keep the lights on all the time here they want the option for both so it's going to be two switches one for the fan and one for the lights which is just going to be on via the Philips Hue lamps now now it's not my preferred option right this ceiling is 2350 the spot specific specifically requested tilts tilt cans. Now JCC don't do the IP66 bezel for the tilts, for the tilt cans. They do it for the integrated, but the client specifically wants uh, cans where she can put GU10 lamps in because 
she has Philips Hue lamps, which she wants on a sensor. So she's got like a Philips Hue motion sensor. So, so she wants them tiltable so she can point them out towards what will be a mirror there and to the toilet and to the shower, but with Philips Hue lamps. So it's above the 2.25. Ideally, I prefer one IP66, something like that, but it satisfies, it's above 2.25, IP20, so, you know, I'm, I'm happy-ish. <laughs> had a bit of a busy uh, afternoon yesterday, I had a couple of other bits to do, but there's the uh, fan isolator, there's the uh, switch which does lights, and that does a fan, that's going to be the ground floor for you, hopefully, let's turn the lights on. So four spots, and then new centrifugal fan, and when you turn the fan on, hopefully, kicks in. Easyfield 20 or Easyfield 30 or whatever. Really good stuff. Nice and easy for idiots like me. <laughs> like a fine filler, really easy to work with. It's a little bit more expensive, of course, rather than like buying plaster. But nice little, cute little bags. I can keep them in my van with a folding bucket, wide filling knife. Mix it to like kind of cottage cheese kind of consistency. Get it into the channel first and then do of wide filling knife after. This is what I'm pulling out. That six mil stranded Tinned twin and earth with no CPC built into the actual cable. And someone had joined that onto the, with a junction box onto this, onto the cookers. They've obviously relocated the cooker supply at some point. And they tapped off of the same brown junction box to do the ignition socket. Um, so I'm just dragging in a, a new six mil. So I'm going to mount like a Two gang box, a blank plate, a couple of stuffers, and some six mil wagers up on the side there. <coughs> but the earth where we're getting it from, if you see here, see that bit of sleeved, um, braided or stranded cable? And that cable goes all the way back and goes all the way round and down to there, if you can see, wrapped round the pipe. People are, people are always surprised. Like, it's not very often you find it. Can't focus in, I think, because I've got my head torch on. But there was a time in history where we, we didn't have CPCs in any cables, like in the well, twin and earth cabling anyway. So there's two and a half mil cable around like the late, late 40s and 50s, like 48 onwards, where we've got six mil, two and a half mil, one and a half mil, all manufactured without the CPC cabling. So the houses are built, built around that time, you kind of expect to come across it but <clears throat> it's it's rarer to come across the six mil on the two and a half mils I, I must admit you come across it with the lighting all the time but two and a half mil and six mil um it's harder to come by nowadays thank goodness but yeah people are always surprised but there's literally no cpc like in it you know anyway let's crack on <laughs> 